Hi right, guys, it's your favourite host, I'm Uncle the Most, and today we are back with another creepypasta, or a series of creepypastas, because today I am tackling the Lavender Town theories. Never, ever has one place or one game caused so much problems, so much trouble, caused been a cause of so many creepypastas. So I thought, yeah, we can't just do one. We're going to have to do them all. So, we start with the most basic and the most well-known. I don't mean the most basic. I mean the most basic as in it was to actually find out a bit about it. And possibly the most realistic of all the theories is Lavender Town Syndrome. I don't, know, I don't know. It could be fact. It could be fiction. There are reasons to believe that it is true. Mainly because the Japanese have a reputation for having music and imagery that causes seizures and could cause these problems for young children between the age of 7 and 12, which is what is believed to have caused what is known as Lavender Town Syndrome. So it's Lavender Town Syndrome is also known as Lavender Town Tone or I'm in the town suicides. Uh, it's but it is just simply a link between the tone of the original, and I mean the original games now. I'm not talking about the American re-releases. I'm talking about Pocket Monsters Green and Red that were originally released in Japan. But what happened was there was a peak in suicides and the illness of children between the age of seven and twelve just after the release of Red and Green in 1996. Now, people believe it is, I mean, it's only speculation, but a lot of people believe that this only occurred once they got to Lavender Town. And, the, and after listening to the track myself, I know it's got extremely high frequencies. Uh, children and young teens can hear. It it was simple, like I said, it's it, that sort of range of seven to twelve years old is the limit, and it is believed that that is true because they are more sensible. Sensible in this case, meaning that they are more sensitive. I'm sure. Uh, due to lavender town, it is believed that. 200 children supposedly committed suicide. I don't know whether this could be true or false. I mean, it's believable. It is thoroughly believable that this could have happened. I mean, maybe the suicides could have been true. But the illness... I, I, I failed to see how it could have caused illnesses. But it is believed that many more developed illnesses and afflictions. Now, the methods they usually killed themselves with was... Um, hanging or jumping from heights. Those who did not acted irrationally and complained of severe headaches. Right, the headaches I can vouch for. I believe that this track does cause headaches because I did listen to the original version of the track and I can agree that that part is completely true. I mean, well, I'm outside of that 7 to 12 age range and it causes me to have a horrible headache. Uh, I'm 16, if anybody was interested. Uh, although Lavender Town now sounds differently depending on the game, which it does. It, 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 it was changed for the American releases. Uh, it was caused by the first Pokemon game released, and they called the Lavender Town Incidents. Programmers fixed Lavender Town's theme music to be a lower frequency, and ever since, children were no longer affected by it. So, as I said, this is probably the worst of the Lavender Town theories, because it's the most believable. Uh, there is a, another thing which says that they managed to spell leave now through unknown using special software. That part I find to be a bit dubious. I, I wouldn't believe that that is probably true. Somebody, if somebody can link me to a video that actually says that, then be my guest and prove me wrong. But other than that, I believe that the first part of this theory is possible. 
I do know that it causes headaches. And, well, I'm going to use you as fodder to see if you comply with this. I am going to play about a 30 seconds extract of the track and comment in down below whether or not you felt funny. And I will disclaim now, you can do this at your own risk. Okay, it's not my fault if anything happens. Okay? So, here it is. From the original games. From the original. Not any of the remakes, but the original. Here you go. Creepy, isn't it? Okay, we now can move on to pasta number two, or theory number two. It's slightly less believable, but nevertheless, we're going to go through it. This is the White Hand Sprite. It's uh, It was known in the code as the White Hand, or the Wit Hand Gib. This was scripted to appear as a Pokemon on the third floor of Lavender Town. It's divided into four separate animations, as they all are. It's an introduction, a cry, an idol, and two attacks. But the attacks that the White Hand Sprite had were not known attacks, they were just fist and brutal. <laughs> While viewing the animation has proven to be hazardous, viewing the frames of the model has been proven to have no adverse effects. Okay, so getting more into this, the white hand is depicted as a shriveled, de slightly decayed hand with surprising attention to detail, which I'm looking at it right now, and yeah, there's no real, you know, it's got some real attention to detail considering. Flesh peeling back from the bone, uh, several tendons dangle realistically out of the wrist. Considering that this was 96, yeah, you could say it's pretty realistic. For a handheld, yeah. First attacked is the hand balling into a fist, then swing it forward. However, the brutal animation is missing frames. Hand seems to open up, then cuts out. After a few seconds, it reappears, closed again. And nobody has found these missing frames. The sprite is mentioned, right, this is uh, from what my little source here is telling me, by the girl next to the Pokemon Tower when you hit no to uh, her question. If you think ghosts exist, she says, haha, I guess not. That white hand on your shoulder is not real, but it's simply a hoax. It never actually existed. So that is the white hand sprite. That is the idea behind the White Hand Sprite, which is obviously in the tower, or just outside the tower. I believe that there is a possibility, a very, very slim possibility, that it exists. But I'm not convinced on that one. But there is no existing sort of video that would allow me to change my mind. So, I guess we'll never know on that front. But, it makes you think. So that brings us on to theory number three. The ghost animation. 
That this is both believable and unbelievable. Uh, it was coded as haunting SWF. That's a flash file for those who are not in the know. And it was intended to be placed in several areas throughout the tower, including the center of a path on the second floor. However, players cannot interact with it, leaving many to believe that it was intended as a background feature. Now, to that point, I can believe it. Because I'm going to go to Gen 4 for a moment. Go out of Lavender Town, and anybody who has ever been to the old chateau will know that there are two ghosts in there. And if you didn't realize they were ghosts, well, I'm sorry for breaking that to you. And there's also a picture in there which, when you look away, looks at you. I'm not sure whether that's really relevant, but you know, they're not against putting ghosts into their games. Anyway, the ghost animation as well must be viewed as in individual frames. It is comprised of 59 in total, however, after extraction, around half of these frames have been revealed to be standard ghost model used in pocket monsters. Around a quarter of the remaining frames are comprised of static to produce a fading effect. However, intersped with these bursts of static are several frames of screaming faces, along with images of a skeletal man in a cloak, believed to be the Grim Reaper, and of several killed corpses. The meaning behind these are unknown, but under oath before the Video Games Commission Board, lead programmer Hayashi Sogabi testified as to having no knowledge as to where these images surfaced. Out of all the phenomena associated with Lavender Town, this animation is most speculated on. In its thesis video, Video Games and the Manipulation of the Human Mind, Dr. Jackson Turner argued that the frames were intentionally placed in, due to their brief time appearing on screen. The graphic nature of the frames Turner theorizes that they were meant to be subliminally influence players into becoming more frightened by the disturbing surroundings. I for one find it difficult to believe that a company like Nintendo or Game Freak would go as far as to intentionally scare their people buyers that consume it through young children into, well, becoming more scared. I find that hard to believe. Now, the fact that these images have never surfaced on the internet and that I cannot find a version of the SWF file in question brings into question how that wouldn't have happened by this point if these were indeed to be true images. So, that leads us to our next theory. This theory is the well-known Buried Alive theory, which... which translates to most people as, I really can't believe this one. But, we're going to look at it. It's referred to as its code, the Barry Manuscript was found on the final story of the Pokemon Tower is now being replaced with the Marowak Ghost according to the scripts assigned to it. The Buried Alive model was intended to be the boss of the tower. Once reaching the top floor the following conversation would have taken place. Buried Alive you're here, I'm trapped and I'm lonely. So very lonely won't you join me? After this, the battle would have initiated. Once in battle view, the buried alive model appears to be a decaying human corpse attempting to crawl out of the ground. It has been programmed to have two white hands, a Gengar and a Muck. 
strangely enough. The protocol for the buried alive actions after it were defeated were not written. In the case of the player defeating him, the game would freeze. However, a specific ending was written by an unknown programmer upon losing the battle. In the this ending, the buried alive was to have stated, finally, fresh meat, followed by several lines of gibberish. He was then to have dragged the player into the ground surrounding him. The scene was finished with a typical game over screen. However, in the background, an image of the buried alive character devouring the player was to have been shot. I don't know whether these actually exist. Oh, hang on a second. He was to have then dragged the player to the ground surrounding him. Oh, yeah, I've just read that. Especially strange are the protocols for after the scene. The cartridge was to download this image to the small internal memory contained in the Game Boy. Overwriting the title screen that normally accompanied the Game Boy turning on. Instead, whenever it was started, the player would view his image as the sound file. Static mesh was played. The intended purpose for this effect, unlike any of the other other factors leading towards Lavender Town Syndrome is unknown. And that is all of them, I believe. Uh, if I've missed any, please don't hesitate to comment and shout at me in the comments. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed. And don't ever do drugs, kids. They're bad for you.